Hello, thank you for joining me on this lovely January morning. I'm in Chorley Wood in Hertfordshire. This is Chorley Wood Village Centre down here. And what we're going to do in today's video, we're going to go up to Chorley Wood House and we're going to go and have a look around the grounds there. It's a country estate about a mile from here. There's quite an interesting walk to get there. It involves going down a couple of rather unusual public footpaths. Now I've commented on this before, one thing I like about Hertfordshire's public footpaths is it tells you, actually it doesn't, but we'll see, it always tells you where they go to and sometimes it tells you the length. Now this one takes us from the village centre up towards the tube station or the London Underground station on the Metropolitan Line, also served by Chiltern Railways services. So we've got to go up all these steps. Now it's quite unusual because it takes us through the station. So I'm not entirely sure where the public footpath technically starts and finishes because it means you can walk on the station platform itself. The down platform doesn't have any ticket barriers. We'll see that when we get there. Um, but what I'm not entirely sure is, is it technically a footpath or could London Transport, if they wanted to, stop you walking through? Anyway, there's never any problem walking through there. This is the station car park. See, it says Lower Road Shops down there. So I think technically the footpath ends here, but as you can see, there's this hatched off, hatched off area for you to walk across, and then you get to here. This would have been the goods yard. So the railway station opened in July 1889, and there'd have been a goods yard up here until about 1966, and then it closed. See, when we get to here, look, it does say, private footpath for the use of railway passengers only. Today we're not actually travelling by train, but I've walked through here many times before, never had a problem. And you can see some people who were ahead of me, they had done their shopping. They had also walked through here, so I don't think it really matters. I think this is possibly my favourite station on the Metropolitan Line. It's such a nice country feel. You've got your old signal box down there. They're going to make that into a museum, is the plan, and have a model railway. So no doubt we'll come and do a video on that. And then there you go, there's the view of the station. So when they do steam on the Met, it's uphill that way. So I've stood here and you know, seen the steam train come through here. They're really working hard. I don't think I've actually got any video of it, unfortunately, because when they last did steam on the Met, I was either not available or I um, didn't, it wasn't making videos. So I don't actually know if I've got any footage of it, but yeah, it really is a really nice station. So as I mentioned, this is the down line. And then that's the up platform. So the up platform does have a set of ticket barriers, but that's only for the up platform. Anyway, we're gonna go down here now. This will take us to the other side, and then we'll be able to continue on our walk. What I'm, another nice thing that's down here, you've got these old postcards, various old postcards displayed all the way down this underpass. So as we come down here, We'll go up to the other side, and when we get across the road, there's another unusual public footpath. That'll take us up to Chorleywood Common, and then we'll cross Chorleywood Common, which is a really pleasant walk, and we'll get to Chorleywood House. So this is a, a walk you could do. If you live in London or Aylesbury or wherever, you could come here on the train and do this walk. It's a really pleasant walk. So as we come up here, there's more of these postcards. Some really nice old ones, one advertising Kew Gardens there. Some I've never been, I really should go there. And then here, got leaflets on display for the Buckinghamshire Railway Centre, which of course was part of the Metropolitan Line further up. And here it says about Friends of Chorleywood Signal Box, how they want to create a small museum with railway memorabilia and have a working model of the station. Really looking forward to see that happen. So we come to here, and we're now at the front of Chorleywood Station. So in there is the entrance to the uh, up platform. Now, interesting thing here, well, look, firstly that, that used to be the Sportsman Hotel. It's now offices downstairs and flats upstairs. There's um, two public footpaths. We're going to go up this one in a moment. See, it says link to the Chess Valley Walk. That's a video for the future. It's 142 yards to Chorleywood Common. That's up the steps. I just want to show you something, though, down here. It's funny, it's because there's two public footpaths that go virtually, well, they go exactly to the same place. There's um, this one as well which is just here behind this building and um, that one there says Chorleywood Common 170 yards so this is the slightly longer one but they as we'll find out in a minute they do join up up there 
First public footpath 042. I want to see which one the other footpath number is. So yeah, this is the area outside the front of the station. It's funny in a way how the um, main station building is on the side that the village isn't. If you have to drive down there, that'll take you round to the village. So we're going to go up through the Sportsman Hotel's grounds. It's not a hotel at all anymore. It is all flats, but as I said, it's public footpath. Oh, now that says public footpath 043. And as I said, they both say Chorley were common. I wonder which one is the one that goes all the way through. We'll find out when we go up the steps. So we'll make our way up here. So as I said, it's a bit of a different public footpath from the one we've just been on. This one definitely is a public footpath. As I said, the railway is slightly arguably, is it actually a public footpath? Come up here and we'll be in the um, courtyard of the flat. So yeah, old sportsman hotel. I think when it closes the hotel, they built various flats in the ground. The other footpath would have come to just there. So if I went back down there, come back down to where we were at the station. We're now going to follow the drive out of the Sportsman Hotel and that takes us to Chorley Hill Commons. You can see the older building there. Seems funny, the old building standing nicely. The more modern flats they've got the scaffolding on them. Anyway, so at least they kept it up the line. The next station, Rickmansworth, there used to be a really nice one hotel called the Long Island Hotel in the 90s. They spent all this money on it, built a massive extension and then they demolished it all. And the original plan was to keep the original hotel and do something a bit like this. And they began demolishing it in about January, I think 2015. And then in the summer, the site was there, the hotel was still standing, but all the extensions had been demolished. And then they went and demolished that as well. So um, Rickmansworth lost its hotel, at least with Chorley Wood, might not have a hotel, but it, um, the building still stands. So we get to here, you see, they can't have full gates because they've got to protect the access for pedestrians walking the footpath, which we've just walked up. And then across the road is Chorleywood Common. I suppose it's a sportsman hotel. I suppose you've got a lot of golfers staying there, perhaps. And there should be a footpath sign somewhere. It's called Betjeman Gardens now, named after John Betjeman. Oh yeah, there's a footpath sign the other side of the road. So as soon as we get across the road, we shall have a look at which number it's always the way, quiet road, the moment you want to cross it with a camera, suddenly every car comes along. Ah, oh, so it's footpath 042, so it's the one with the steps, that is the one that goes all the way through. And as I said, it says link to Chess Valley Walk. We'll do that in the future, because that is, I have done it before, it's a really nice walk. I'd like to do a video on it. We come up to here, we're just coming into the car park of Chorleywood Common. It's starting to get a bit muddy looking, but... Funny, there's a larder park there. That's my larder. My wellies are in the boots. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my wellies on and we're going to go for a walk across Chorleywood Common to find Chorleywood House. I've now got my wellies on and we're going to walk across Chorleywood Common. So it's a very pleasant walk for a very nice day like today. Now on the common, as we cross it, we'll see some quite interesting sculptures made of wood. So I'm going to point out some of them to you and then we'll eventually get to Chorleywood House, which is right on the other side. So it's an interesting place because it's a golf course and a common. I have done videos here before. I did one where we were looking into the possibility of was there ever another rail halt between here and Rickmansworth. And I think we kind of came to the conclusion that there wasn't. It's a bit of a urban legend. So if you want to see that video, have a look at the link on screen now. That was the other stately home on that side, the common Chorleywood house is on this side, the common. So I'm going to walk across and see what we can find. I've come to one of the ponds on Chorleywood Common. It is covered in ice. I'm not going to attempt to walk across it. It probably isn't going to hold my weight. Saying about some of the sculptures you've got along here, there's a nice one there of a giant frog or a toad. So he might be able to jump across the ice, although I don't think he's going to do it while he's on camera, but I'm not going to cross the ice. I'm going to head out that way now into the woods and that will take us over to Chorleywood House. And we're now just starting to enter the woods. And to come into the woods here, we have this tree here. And it's called the Memorial Tree. So I think the idea is it's a memorial to 
various local people if that's what they wish, but have a look at it. There's some more, we saw a giant frog. Well, there's some more giant creatures on it. Look, there's a, a giant stag beetle. There's um, a couple of giant butterflies on it. There's, is that a giant woodlouse just there above my head? Um, what else have we got? There's a few giant ants up there. Burnham Beaches is known for seeing ants that are big, but that's like little big ants. These ones are really quite big. There's also a giant dragonfly up there, so that's quite exciting. And it's quite a nice uh, use of a tree, so it's, that's the memorial tree. We're now going to leave the grassy area on the edge of the common and head deeper into the woods. So it's a very pleasant walk across the common and um, we'll soon come, as I keep saying, to Chorleywood House. I now feel like I'm deep in the woods and I always enjoy a walk through woods. It's always so calming and you can just hear the sound of the birds singing. I've seen a few animals though, uh, but not real ones, more wooden animals. Talking of things made of wood, there's this wooden climbing frame, this sort of rustic style climbing frame. Now can I... That looks a bit too slippery. I really want to go on it though because I'm that kind of person. Problem is I haven't, I've only got half my balance because I'm holding a camera. There we go. Wow, yeah, I've only got half my balance because of this camera, so I'm holding onto this piece of wood here. But look, it's yeah, quite cool. Sort of thing I'd love to have played on as a child. Well, no, I'll rephrase that sort of thing I love to play on anyway. Climb down here, and <laughs> we're kind of in the middle of it. So, yeah, that's uh, that's quite exciting. I do really like things like that. Oh, look, there's a, I can see a wooden animal. The great thing about these wooden animals is they don't run away. I've had it in the past. I'll be making a video and I'll say, oh, look, there's a deer. And of course, it runs away. And then I just like, well, the viewers don't get to see the deer, but we have an animal here. There's some dogs barking as well, but that's not the animal. Take so you see, look at this. It's really cute as well. A wooden um, fox. Hello. So it's just like you can just stroke it and it's not going to run away or bite you or do anything. So we're now coming towards the end of the woods. God, there's a dog going mad. I don't know if you can hear that. Just over there, I wasn't going to go over there on today's video, is the Christ Church of Chorleywood. Chorleywood, for a long time, the place Chorleywood has existed going back, you know, to Neolithic times. It was kind of on the boundary of the two kingdoms of Mercia and Wessex. So I think technically now we're in Wessex. But if we cross the border into Buckinghamshire, I believe the Buckinghamshire border is the old border between um, Wessex and Mercia. Anyway, over there somewhere behind the trees, there's a cricket club, and then beyond it is the parish church, the Christ Church, Chorley Wood. I understand when they built that, that's when Chorley Wood effectively gained independence from Rickmansworth and became the village it is today. And then, of course, the railway came and it grew, and it's now a village of about 11,000 people. Very pleasant place to live, so it's in Hertfordshire, but it's on the Metropolitan Line. Oh, now look at this. We're coming to the main road, but before we get to the main road, I've just spotted some more something else, another exciting looking wooden climbing frame. Then we'll cross the main road and enter the Chorley Wood House estate. I think there's a few of them. I seem to think one of them was almost a bit like a wooden version of Stonehenge. I don't know if I quite say that about this one, but it's the same idea. Another one of these wooden climbing frames. This is the best thing about coming on a weekday when all the children are at school. I can just, you know, play on it. Look, I'm going to go inside it. This one's even got like a little archway. Yeah, perhaps I am a bit big to get under the arch. But look at this, it's so cool. I'm not going to walk around the top because I'll probably fall off because it's slippery. But yeah, this is really exciting. I'm talking of, um, we've got two different 90s estates cars on each side of the common. There's my larder on one side. And look, there's an old Volvo parked over there. So I'm going to go over there through the car park, cross the road, and over there, the grounds of Chorleywood House. So here we are, we're now in the parkland of the Chorleywood estate. It immediately has a different feeling from the common land. So where we were, we were over there, said that's the busy road which we just came across to the commons over there. We're now in the parkland of Chorleywood House estate. You can just see that the house through there. We're gonna go around through the bushes this way to the front of the house so you see the the front 
as, as it sort of appears out of the trees. Now, the house was built by a gentleman called John Barnes. Originally, this would have just been a couple of farms. He bought the farms and he built the house in 1882. John Barnes was a banker. He also had shares in the Buckinghamshire Railway, so that was the railway line which ran from Bletchley over to Banbury, Merton Street and to Oxford. The latter section is currently in the process of being rebuilt and reopened as the East-West Rail Line, so I'm very much looking forward to travelling on that when that reopens. So it's quite nice to think this many years on when he lived in his house, he had a railway built and here we are, they're rebuilding that railway again. Now, um, is there actually a path? There's the, I can see the house. Um, I'm not sure if I can get through here. I might have come the wrong side. Oh yeah, there's a little way through the bushes. So this was uh, John Barnes' house and he owned the estate. He lived here for 70 years and then it was eventually bought by somebody called Lady Ella Russell. She was a relative of the Duke of Bedford. She actually used to live in Woburn Abbey. Somewhere I'd like to go to in the future. I have been there as a child because it's got a safari park in the grounds. They've also got a miniature railway. I have to do a miniature railway bridge episode there one day. So she came from Woburn Abbey. When her father died, she inherited a load of money. And with that money, she bought Chorleywood House, which we are just about to see. It's just revealing itself now as we come to the front of the house. So there we go. We'll get a bit closer. It's a very, I think it's a very attractive looking house. The sun's shining right on it at the moment. That's the problem with winter sun sometimes. We'll see it better as we get close. So she, she built lots of extensions on it. It's really, the sun is not being very helpful right now. She built lots of extensions on it. She improved the estate. She made the estate self-sufficient. So it became, you know, really sort of um, where it, it worked basically. She would have had farms and everything and she didn't really have to buy anything in. Now this, this pond is quite interesting because as well as being an ornamental pond, its other function was if there was ever a fire, the water could be used straight away to put a fire out on the house. So that's the function of this pond. She also, Lady Ella Russell, built the sunken garden. Now, see where there's a chain link fence? Well, that's kind of there. I can see the house a bit better now. That's, it's private, that side. The house is now flat. The house has had quite an interesting um, history. So in the war, it was used to house evacuees from London. And then it eventually became owned by a local council. And the council ran it and downstairs, there was a library. I think I remember on one of my other videos, some people commenting saying they used to go here to go to the library and upstairs were flats and they were said to be some of the most luxurious council flats in the country. And then in the 90s, the council sold it and it was converted into the luxury apartment it is today. This is the sunken garden, which Lady Ella Russell had built. Let me just go over this. <laughs> Looks like it's been snowing. It is just frost, but it's such thick frost that it um, has the appearance of snow. Oh yeah, some little steps in the corner. There's a way down there, there's a window cleaner. I'm being superstitious. If I was to go in that way, I'd have to walk under a ladder and uh, yeah, probably wouldn't do anything, but you never know. Nice little pavilion there. So we go down these little steps here, taking us into the sunken garden. What we'll do, once we've done that, we'll have a look around the rest of the estate. So you get quite a nice view this side of the house here. There are more gardens beyond that hedge, but they're private. They're for the residents of Chorleywood House. But it, it's nice, you know, that we've got all these gardens that we can come and enjoy. So, yeah, so yeah there's, the, there's the house. I said there's the window cleaner. He's moved his ladder now. So, oh, do I go out this way? And that gives you a nice view of the sunken garden. What we'll do, we'll go out here. My next place I want to show you is the dell, which is quite an interesting part of the estate. So we go through here and then we'll eventually go down to the River Chess and have a look. Now, I believe she also um, used the River Chess. She, I'll, I'll get onto that when we get down there. But um, yeah, so she, it, she really did use the whole estate to its you know, full potential. There's a dog running towards me with a stick. Sorry dog, I'm not gonna throw out a stick for you because I'm in the middle of making the video, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> He's deposited that stick and run off. Can't see much, I know, because of the sun. Anyway, I'm gonna continue off down here, down towards the dell. 
I'm just come over from the house that's over there. We get to a bit of a junction. This in itself isn't possibly the most interesting part of the estate, but the reason I'm showing this to you is because it gives you an idea. You've got a map here, so we've come across across there to the house. We're gonna head down here now to the dell and eventually down to the river chess. If you were to come here yourself, you can here on this post there are some you can get maps of I've already got one so I'm not gonna take with me you can get your own map of the estate if you'd like to come here so it's quite an easy place to explore looks as though you could park here as well if you were to come by car but if you were coming from further afield by train then as I said it's a really pleasant walk across the common now when you get to here there's footpaths so there's one's going off over there one's going off over there I want to go this way to the Dell because to me this is possibly one of the most exciting parts of the estate. We're going to go behind here and there's, I think this is the Dell Mound, so you've got a bit of a mound first and then there's a stream which it's called the Leet. The Leet is a word you get in like in mills, like the stream that goes into the mill. Um, also I did find out that the, the building, there was a summer house which we saw, that was the Tudor style building with red painted woodwork. There was another building which I walked past and didn't say anything about. I've discovered that was um, where they, I believe, generated electricity. They actually pumped water up from the chest. So this was one of Lady Ella Russell's installations. It's really quite pleasant in here, I think. Let's go down this footpath. The, um, the stream must flow down there. I remember from a previous visit, there was a pond down here and some more quite nice sculptures. So that's what I'm hoping to show you. And then I'll finish the video off down by the River Chess. So, I'm gonna go off down there now. We're gonna go and find these sculptures in the Dell. I've just come down from the Dell Mound where we were a moment ago, and this is the Leet. Now this looks very much like a man-made river. So maybe, as I said, I'm, this one I'm not too sure, so anyone watching might be able to help me out. I understand the water was pumped up from the Chess. Maybe this was the runoff, because no water in it now, so maybe it's not a natural stream. This was like the runoff to take the water back down to the chest. I understand the area is main by, maintained by the friends of the Chorleywood House and you can see they do a great job of looking after the estate and keeping it this place it is for us to walk along. So this leet flows winding its way down there. It reminds me of times when you go to like um, the seaside you'll sort of see these gardens and um, you'll sort of have these streams and there's not always water in them but a man-made stream. Oh, now this, this is what I was looking for. Very wintry feeling, but here's the pond with ice on. Again, I'm not going to walk across the ice or try. And there's some more nice sculptures. So I wonder if it's the same person who makes these sculptures, who carved the sculptures over on the common. Again, I expect someone watching would be able to tell me this. So let's walk around the pond, and then after that I'm going down to the chest. So it's, it's nice to find this bit of water here. Let's have a look at some of the sculptures, though. And you look, what's this? It's a wizard. There's a wise old wizard in the forest reading a book. And then if you look on top of there's a heron up there, not a real heron. I don't think there's any fish down there. On the heron, what have we got there? We've got you can just see the wing of a dragonfly. The leap does continue on down there. So there's any runoff. I suppose when it rains a lot, it flows like a stream. There, I'm sure there used to be one had like steps going up to a house maybe that one rotted away i don't know i suppose the thing with these they don't always last forever necessarily get to here look there's a, a rather nice bench with an acorn in the bench an oak tree leaf some more foxes another oak tree leaf and an acorn and then up here there's another path going back that way up here is a wise old owl and now I'm going down to the River Chess. So now I've come down the hill to the bottom of the estate and we're in the Chess Valley proper. There's another one of those, those, those signs. It says the Chorleywood House Estate, footpath 35. Strangely they've taped it over, but it says footpath 34 to footpath 2, 656 yards. So you probably can't read that, but I can just see it the way they've taped it over. So the River Chess itself is over there. Now we'll have to go a bit along here to find it. You may be able to hear the M25. So the River Chess obviously flows in a culvert under the M25. We'll discover all that when I do a video on the Chess Valley Walk. It's something 
you know, I certainly want to do um, whenever I can, really. So the River Chess, as I said, crosses the M25. We have done a video where something else crosses the M25 in Chorleywood, the Metropolitan Railway. If you'd like to see that video, have a look at the link on screen now. So I go and go under the M25 and see trains passing under. I'm now going to continue this way. I'm, I'm officially on the Chess Valley Walk to go and find River Chess itself. So here we are, we're down in the Chess Valley. It's really nice and very wintry feeling down here, very frosty. And just over there is the River Chess itself, which we've been sort of walking through this whole time. So this is the Chess Valley Path or Chess Valley Way. It's a, a walk I want to do in the future. I'll probably sort of break it up into three parts and do this walk, you know, in one go. We're just coming to the chess now. It's a little bay and there's a few ducks. I thought they'd all come walking up to me thinking I've got food for them, which I haven't. But look, they're all probably a bit scared and they're all, you can see them all just swimming off. We'll go over to that bridge and finish it there. So you've got a really nice little bay and real chess. And that's the bridge. So the Chess Valley Way runs from Rickmansworth to Chesham. And I think when I do it, what I'll probably do, I'll break it into three sections. I'll do Rickmansworth to Chorley Wood, so I'd end up walking back up through Chorley Wood House. Funny enough, what I've got to do when I finish this video. Then I'll come another day to Chorley Wood, park where I parked, and come down here and walk to Rickmans, uh, not to Rickmansworth, to Chalfont Latimer, again along the chest and up again, and finally Chalfont Latimer to Chesham, and I'd use the train in between. So we get to here, that's the bridge. There is a path that continues that way, so. I'll have a look on the map to see where that goes. It seems the Chess Valley Walk, oh, it's called Chess Valley Walk, yeah, not way. It's just here, so it says Chess Valley Walk, and there it says Parish, Sarat Parish Footpath. So up there on the other side of the hill is the village of Sarat, which is also a really nice place, nice village to go to. That's a video for another day though. So this is the River Chess, there's those ducks. Once the bridge takes you over the chess, it does continue on a boardwalk across an area which probably floods. As I say, Sarat's up there. So that's looking upstream to Chesham. As I say, video for another day. And then that's looking to where we've just come from. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to do this walk for yourself, you can see it's a fairly easy place to get to. So thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment from the River Chess. Goodbye.